Konnichiwa, minasan. I'm Matteo, and this is Manga You May Have Missed. Today, we'll be looking at one of my personal favorites, Rosario Vampire. Rosario Vampire is written by Akihisa Ikeda. It began serialization in Monthly Shonen Jump in 2004 and ended in 2007. The series was published in 10 volumes and consists of 40 chapters. The sequel of the series, Rosario Vampire Season 2, began serialization in 2007 and is still ongoing. The manga was licensed in North America and the United Kingdom by Viz Media and in Australia and New Zealand by Mad Men Entertainment. The first chapter begins with the title, The Academy Vampire. We meet 15-year-old Skune Aono, an ordinary, mediocre boy, riding a bus and lamenting failing his high school entrance exam, forcing him to enroll in a middle-of-nowhere school. The narration declares that to be the start of his bizarre academy life. The bus driver addresses him in creepy font, asking if he is enrolling in Yokai Academy. As Skune gets off the bus, the driver warns him to be careful, with good reason, as they have arrived in a truly creepy location, a castle-like building complete with cliché lightning flash, crows, a couple of skulls on the ground. Skune is understandably confused, as they had been driving through a completely normal road earlier. Skune decides to leave immediately, creeped out by the locale. Unfortunately, the plot catches up with him as he is run over by a girl on a bicycle. When he overcomes his momentary shock, he's at first astounded by the fact that there is a female presence in front of him. It's a girl! Because you don't meet many of those as a 15-year-old boy. The girl mutters something about being dizzy from her anemia, hint hint, but Skune is too busy being physically pushed back by her hotness to notice. He decides that maybe the school wouldn't be so bad after all, then spuds blood from his nose in typical Japanese fashion, when he realizes, oh yeah, I was touching her inner thigh earlier. Oops. He is much too distracted to notice the girl's shocked reaction to his nosebleed. What he does notice is when the scent of his blood makes her jump on top of him. I'm sorry, but, she whispers, it's just cause I'm a vampire. He then proceeds to suck the blood off his clothes. Skinny then does the only logical thing, freaks out, terrified that his blood has been sucked. The girl apologizes and introduces herself as Mocha Akashia, our female protagonist. Skune, still freaking, asks if Mocha is referring to the stereotypical non-Twilight vampire. She is. He calms down, relieved for some reason. Skune and Mocha start walking towards the school. Mocha asking Skune about his opinion on vampires. He, panicking, states that he thinks vampires are pretty unique. This cheers her, and she asks him to be her first friend at the academy, as she was feeling lonely. Skune is too busy staring at her legs to respond. They agree to meet after the entrance ceremony is over to talk some more. Skuna is enthusiastic, but is still confused about the whole vampirism thing. At the start of their first class, the teacher introduces herself as Shizuka Nekonome, a pun as Neko means cat and she is a cat girl. She then states that, which everyone already knows, that Yokai Academy was a school built for monsters by monsters. Skuna, of course, is completely shocked. Nekonome sensei continues explaining that monsters, or Yokai, hence Yokai Academy, how did Skuna miss that, have trouble coexisting with humans, but their survival necessitates learning how. Hence, the school was created to teach young yokai how to live invisibly alongside humans. The students are separated into four houses named after the four founders of... Wait, wrong school. Skune once again succumbs to a state of manic terror, as Nekonome sensei explains that because of that, all the students must live in human form while they're at the academy. Yet so often this gets completely ignored throughout the series. The students are told to never show the other students their true forms. Again, this rule is never followed. A juvenile delinquent then asks the teacher why it wouldn't be better to eat all the humans and molest the beautiful girls. Almost directly behind him, Skune has a terrorgasm. The bus driver's words finally click as Skune realizes just how screwed he is. Nekonome ignores the question and goes on to point out that everyone in the academy grounds is a yokai, and that there are no genuine humans there, because the academy is within a secret, sacred world. To those humans who come to know of our existence, we will bring them death or something! This sets Skune into another terrorgasm. He then wonders how in the hell he got into the school in the first place, and flashes back to his father bringing home a flyer from the school. We then learn that Skune actually has the most sense in his family. As mom and dad party, he demands to know where the flower came from. Dad says he picked it up after a creepy priest dropped it. Skune then declares that he won't go to such a suspicious school until he's overridden by his mom. Back in the present, Skune decides to escape the school ASAP when who should come late to class but Mocha. She draws the attention of every male in the class who loudly declare how happy they are to be in the class, until Mocha sees Skune and flings herself into his arms. This causes the entire male population of the class to hate Skune's guts, all save our juvenile delinquent who sits back and licks his lips. Skune, paralyzed by hormones, decides that if I can be this happy, I guess the monsters aren't that big a deal. Mocha and Skune enter the school corridor, where every other boy in the school is waiting to oogle Mocha and hate Skune. The delinquent from earlier stops them in the middle of the hall and introduces himself as Saizo Komiya. He then asks Mocha why she's hanging out with a wimp like Skune. The background chatter in the hall informs us that Komiya is a rogue monster, forced to attend the academy against his will, and has a habit of molesting human women. Sounds like a lovely young man, doesn't he? 
Komiya then tells Moko to ditch Skune and go off with him to have some fun. Moko responds by dragging Skune away and stating, I'm having fun with Skune right now. Either she missed the euphemism entirely, or Skune is going to have a very good first day of school. Komiya then vows revenge. In a stairwell, Skune asks Moko why she's being so friendly to him, even though he is worthless and mediocre. Moko then bursts out that to her, Skune isn't mediocre or anything. Besides, we're on blood-sucking terms. She then explains that Skune's blood is the best she's ever tasted, better by far than blood from transfusion packs. Skune naturally dislikes being treated as food. Moko then informs him that that was her first time. Skune was the first person whose body she had ever fed from. In short, Skune stole her blood-drinking virginity. She then punches his shoulder good-naturedly and embeds him in the wall. Then there's a montage of them exploring the campus, Skune feeling like he's on a date, until he sees the dorm rooms which resemble a decrepit apartment building. Moka, on the other hand, sees it as incredibly beautiful. Confused by his negative reaction, Moka then asks what kind of monster Skune is, making him panic for a second before attracting the question, as it would violate school rules. He then changes the subject as he tells Moka that he can't see her as anything but a normal human. Moka then reveals that if you remove the rosary from her chest, she becomes an evil, scary vampire. Gentlemen, if you're waiting for an opportunity to look at her chest, now would be the time. Moku explains that rosaries conceal vampiric powers. She put it on herself because her evil form caused conflict and was hated. Skone is still incredulous, but forgets that as Moka starts caressing him, stating that sealed vampires retain their craving for blood. Her weakness. And she bites Skone's neck. Capucho! The next morning, Skune is pondering handing in a withdrawal notice when he is ambushed by Komiya, who slams him against a wall, stating that Skune will pay for spending time with Moka. He then demands to know what Skune's true form is. Skune declares himself to be a vampire, which makes Komiya attempt to shatter his skull. Vampires seriously piss Komiya off, as he threatens Skune with a giant hand, stating that if he talks to her again, he's a dead boy. Yep. Not man. Boy. Skune paces in fright, until he is once again haved by Moka. He backs away from her in fright, declaring that he wants to go to a human school to Moka's puzzlement. She protests his decision, stating that she hates humans. She then explains that she attended human schools up through middle school, and was isolated and alone, until she met Skune. Skune then decides that Moka deserves the truth, and asks her if she would still stop him from leaving if he was human. This leaves her speechless, until Skune bursts out that he is a human, and that his being at Yokai Academy is some kind of mistake. Moka is still stunned. Skune sees her expression, and states that she is shocked because of the statement. Moka puts a hand on his shoulder to stop him. Let go! You hate humans, right? Oh, and excuse me for being a friend to a monster! Ouch. He then runs off into the distance. Skune stops at the edge of the school property and ponders his decision. The bus pulls up and the same creepy bus driver says he knew Skune would run away. He says that it's fine and tells Skune to board the bus if he has no regrets. We cut to Moka, who is on the verge of crying due to the loss of her first and only friend. Komiya then appears behind her and grabs her, saying that she shouldn't be alone if she can be with him, once again licking his lips. Meanwhile, the bus drives away. Moka and Komiya are suddenly in a graveyard, Komiya throwing Moka against a headstone. He then tells Moka that she is even more beautiful than the human women he's molested. Yes, because every girl wants to hear that. He then states that he can't contain his human disguise any longer, and transforms into... I'm not quite sure what. Moka screams for Skune's help, forgetting that he's a puny human who couldn't do anything in this situation. Looks like maybe die. As Komiya wraps his giant prehensile tongue around Moka, Ew. Skune arrives to save the day. Apparently, he has something to say to Moka. But Komiya is having none of it, reminding Skune about his warning to avoid Moka. Skune then realizes that Komiya has transformed into a... whatever, and promptly freaks again. Moka tells Skune to run like the wimp he is, as Skune wonders if Moka's true form is just as disturbing. Komiya bitch slaps Skune across the graveyard. Moka runs after him while Komiya does a victory dance. Komiya then points out the obvious, that Skune is too weak to stand a chance against him. Moka leans over Skune's unconscious body, lamenting the horror of his fate, blaming herself for hurting humans as a vampire. Turns out she only wanted a friend, even a human one, but she declares it to be impossible because she'd only wind up hurting Skune as well. Skune awakens and puts a hand on her shoulder, stating that he realized that running away from the people who would probably eat him was wrong, because he wanted to be Moka's friend too. Even if you are a vampire, I like you, Moka. God, that's corny. Fortunately, Komi sides with the readers and kicks Skune in the back. As Skune falls, he makes one last, desperate grab for Moka's boobs, but instead pulls off her rosary seal. This releases an explosion of power. Moka's nails and teeth grow to fine points, and her hair turns from pink to silver. Komiya functions as Nappa for this sequence, stating that that level of power is impossible, and that Moka is practically another person. Her eyes change from giant and girly to cat-like slits as the transformation ends, and Skune beholds his first vampire. The transformed Moka taunts Komiya, telling him to try and take her by force. He attempts to grab her with his giant hand, but Moka doesn't even twitch. 
Know your place, she declares, as she gives Komi a kick in the face and the audience a panty shot. Yeah, get used to seeing Mocha's underwear. Every villain is dispatched in this manner. Komi flies through several trees and headstones, while Mocha decrees that a low-class monster like Komi doesn't make for a decent opponent. Skune, awake again, thinks to himself that this Mocha is completely different from the girl he knows. Mocha asks if he's scared of her, while Skune tries to figure out which girl is the real Mocha. Hmm. Pink-haired, doe-eyed, hapist, or silver-haired psycho killer? Tough choice. Mocha takes the rosary from Skune and says that she's been asleep for a long time and is still tired, and has no intention of harming Skune because his blood is precious to her sleeping self. She then tells him to take care of the other Mocha until they meet again and reattaches the rosary. Mocha's appearance returns to normal, and she slumps asleep in Skune's arms. The bus driver, who apparently didn't leave, marvels in his creepy way at Skune's courage for staying at the academy. The next day, as Skune is ripping up his withdrawal notice, Mocha greets him in her special way. Skune smiles as the notice flies off into the wind. Make no mistake, there's a lot of anxiety about this, but I found something at this academy that's impossible to get anywhere else! Mocha then tells him that her heart beats so hard when they're together, juxtaposed with her chasing him through the school, asking to suck his blood, and once again pissing off the male students. The end. Rosario Vampire is one of my favorite manga, and I swear I read it for the plot. That said, the plot is the main thing that makes up for the gratuitous fan servers, panty shots, etc., which is my main problem with the anime adaptation. The 13-episode anime Rosario Vampire was aired from January to March 2008. It was produced by Gonzo and directed by Takayuki Inagaki, written by Hiroshi Yamaguchi. The problem with this is that the 13 episodes only encompass the first arc of the manga. This in itself is not a problem, until another 13-episode series, Rosario Vampire 2 Kapu, aired in 2008. Instead of continuing the series, it decided to jump ahead to Season 2, ignoring most of the major plot points and several characters' backstories and story arcs. In other words, it became not but fan servers with almost no plot to speak of. Instead of the constant fan servers being a funny in-joke, it became the entire reason for the show's existence. As you may have guessed, I don't like it! Rosario Vampire is not the best manga I've ever read, but it is still wildly entertaining and will make you laugh... and groan. It deserves a look-through because fan servicey as it is, it still tells a great, lovable story. <laughs> Hey! <laughs>